Hi guys, today we've got a Sea Doo RXT 215 2007 model low hours which I've recently purchased. Um, I lifted the hood when I originally got the ski and found that the hydraulic arm was disconnected. The hydraulic shock for the to hold the hood up. Um, I took the shock off so I proceeded to take the shock off and it was seized so I had a new one built uh, hang on I'll just to get the shock off you need a small flat screwdriver and inside here I'll show you on this end it's a little bit easier you have a circlip which holds it onto the ball socket which is this that one there mm -hmm. and to undo it from the ball socket you simply lever that clip up and the connection will come apart mm -hmm. so I will get this one off and there we go it's off now this shock from Sea-Doo I believe is around $180 now I did try one from super cheap auto and it was not strong enough to hold the hood up in the air so where did you get it again I went to I found a, a regas a strut regas workshop in Kabulcha okay there it is there, strut regas. Ah, uh, yep. Kabulcha. Mm -hmm. They spec'd the original shock absorber and built this one for me for $45, which I thought was a bargain. So I then proceeded to put this one on and went for our first ride, came back and lifted the hood and it wouldn't hold up because because the shock had come adrift from the ball joint there now I reconnected it which is a fairly simple job you just push the shock on like that connected it at the top then we went for another ride came back and same thing the shock was disconnected from the bottom pivot Again, this is how you get it off normally. Move that clip out and then it will pop off the ball joint. Mm -hmm. So I put it back on, third trip out, came back and it's off again. And I thought there's got to be something here. Maybe I should zip tie it on, but that's not how they come from the factory. So I was researching a little bit on the internet and I came across Air Bulletin issued by Sea-Doo in October 2008. Now it does say um, 2008 models. This one is a 2007 RXT. Um, it's obviously got the same issue. Now what they're saying is that the bracket location is wrong, is incorrect from the factory. So what we are required to do is undo the shock from the bottom bracket which I've already done obviously and they're telling us to relocate the bracket by on RXT models 15 millimeters to the left from the original location so that means you've got to drill holes in your CD Okay, that's fair enough. It's the inside hole. It's not going to leak water. Mm -hmm. And I think most people who are reasonably handy will be able to use a drill to put in a couple of rivets. Mm -hmm. So our next step is to take out, to remove the existing bracket. Okay. So that's the mounting bracket. The lower is the original positioned mounting bracket, the lower mounting bracket which Sea-Doo are telling us needs to be moved 15 millimeters to the left. So 
actually probably is 15 millimeter from the center of the rivet and it will be the center of the new rivet here. In the hydraulic arm was in position was that it was leaning this is a little bit exaggerated but it was leaning to the left like so which means that downward pressure is pushing the rod the piston rod out to the side mm -hmm. maybe that's why they're saying to straighten it up by moving that 15 millimeters mm -hmm. that'll make it straight okay. okay so now we're going to remove the mounting bracket from its original position I'm using a three millimeter drill bit and we'll proceed to drill out the rivets Through there, just try the front one. Through there, as well. yep. Now, I will vacuum up all these bits here because we don't want iron filings or metal filings floating throughout the jet ski hull. Three and a half mil drill bit. I think I'll go now to a four, maybe four and a half. Okay. Okay, we're back with a four and a half mil drill bit. Yep. There's one out. Mm -hmm. Go. That's out as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got a set of calipers set for 15 millimeter. Uh, maybe that's where the centre of the hole is there. Just push it under that wire. And the marking pen about okay, that's the first mark done. So that's fifteen. That's fifteen millimeters. From the original hole. From the original hole, centre okay. to centre. Okay, so now I'll drill the first pilot hole using a, I think it's a 1.5mm drill bit. And go there. And then on the second hole. I'm going to use a couple of 3mm aluminium rivets to locate the bracket in the new position. But first, I need to drill a couple of three millimeter holes. Mm -hmm. Okay, next size up, which is four mil. Better off to go start small and go bigger. There we go. Try it again. Okay, so that's four millimeters. Four millimeter drill. Yeah. But you start with the small one. Yes. Okay, so that's the new position for the bracket. Now we put in the pop rivets with a rivet gun. We have the pop rivet gun insert the rivet light pressure just to hold the rivet inside and we'll put it down first rivet in second rivet in there we go now, all right now reading the service bulletin they say to disconnect the connecting pole, I suppose it would be, what would it be? Connecting shaft, which raises and lowers the hood from this rectangular plate. So we'll undo this bolt here. Seven millimeter ring spanner and a small Sid Crime shifter. So the reason we're disconnecting this is 
and it's the first time I've seen or heard of this method of connecting the shock absorber but the bulletin says that disconnect that that allows you to have more movement up like so and you put a half inch drive socket drive into the square in the bracket there I'm not sure whether you can see it where my finger is now coming out that's square this one yeah, that's square that's, is, it's not a square it's well it's an oblong but oblong, they, yeah. they say a half inch drive yeah. ratchet drive will fit into there so what are you going to do with that it will allow us to f lift the bracket up far enough to put the shock absorber on without resorting to a strap method mm -hmm. okay bear with me guys well, I've never done this before so we'll see how it goes now before I put this shock back on I'm going to copper anti-seize grease ideal for harsh environments I have used it on exhaust manifolds that have come undone slid apart quite successfully after about two years of operation wipe it around and thread the clip cap back on okay I'll do the same with the bottom mount. What's the purpose of that? That stops corrosion. Okay. And if you need to pull it apart, you'll be able to. Alright. So, you'll notice up when closed. So, this end is the top of the shock absorber. Look on the bottom one, hopefully. Alright, so. That's now on, so what we have to do is compress the shock absorber or move this up far enough to get this onto there. Mm -hmm. Then this is where the half inch drive comes in apparently. So there we go, I'm now putting pressure up with the half inch drive. close there we go okay. well that's a lot easier than using the strap method which I was told by my jet ski dealer is the only way to get them on so now it's on but now we have to put that in here okay it so it says that. remove the washer and clip that retains the stainless steel rod and that's that little clip there and then remove the rod from the cover. Okay. okay. Going to remove the clip holding, the retaining clip holding the stainless steel rod into the hood. Which is a fairly simple job, you just got to be careful you don't lose the clip when it flies off into the lawn. What did you use? You I'm, just use, I'm use using a small, small flat cut. screwdriver. Okay. There we go, one clip, one stainless washer, and one rod out, okay. All right, so now I will have to reattach the little bolt that I removed earlier from the bottom. One other thing that I found on a SeaDo forum from America was the play in that bracket like so there's up the back here there's a 10 millimeter bolt it's very hard to see I'll go by feel
way. So I've reattached the stainless rod to the lift bracket here with the nut and bolt and now we'll attach, reattach the shock absorber to the ball knuckle using the half inch drive. on. We have to reattach the stainless bar to the hood. Okay, so theoretically we should now be able to compress the strap like so. Slide that in. Voila! it's in. So then we refit the washer and the circlet using a pair of pointy nose pliers and hopefully not bouncing it across the yard. There we go. That's now on. All that's left is to reconnect the dash wires which normally they have a zip tie and held onto that strap. Plug that in, make sure it clicks. All right, now we'll see if it works. Well, it's staying. Well, <laughs> so it works. And it's going down and it's staying up. I'll update later after our first time out with the new mounting position. I will put a little bit of silicon over those holes just purely to cover them. I don't think they would do any damage but I'll just put some silicon on them. And I'll also spray some anti-corrosive onto the two toe mount bolts up inside the hole there. I can just see that there's some surface oxidization on one of those nuts. So I'll spray those and um, keep that as part of my regular maintenance. Okay, thank you, that's how it's done. The tools that we required was a half inch drive, as stated by Cedu, for pivoting the hinge mount for the hood. A small shifter because I didn't have two seven millimeter spanners. One seven millimeter spanner that that was for undoing the bolt for the stainless rod. The vernier calipers simply for measuring the 15 millimeters. One pair of pointy nose pliers for removing circlips. One small flat blade screwdriver for undoing the strut mounts, the, the strut clips to hold them onto the ball, one pop rivet gun, some anti-seize grease, the drill, drill, and temporary stand or broomstick holder mm -hmm. to hold the hood up while we were working. Okay. And of course the drill bits. And again, this was the CDU service bulletin issued October 24th, 2008, which I had not seen until yesterday, and it's now 2021. And that explains, I printed that off, and that explains to us who aren't really jet ski mechanics or mechanics of any sort um, how to repair the gas strut location so that it doesn't pop off hopefully and we'll let you know about that later on thank you for watching i hope this is a help to somebody